Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Games Silicon video, we have yet more information concerning AMD's Ryzen based processors. This includes overclocking the models available on launch and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then we're going to tackle rumor territory because the rumors tell us that EVGA will actually be partnering with AMD for the RX 500 series, which is very surprising, and we'll get into why in just a moment. So, first thing first, let's talk about an interview, well, I guess interview slash bit of information that was um, discussed between PCWorld.com and numerous folks over at AMD. So this is not rumors, this is actual concrete information. So, AMD have launched about 30 AM4 motherboards and Ryzen uh, PCs, which are gonna be popping out as, of course, the processors uh, launch out, but, What's very important is that originally the rumours were with Zen and then to Ryzen that the processor would launch in just the high-end 8-core 16-thread model to begin with, which, just to clarify, is the same CPU that we've seen in all of the demos at the moment, and the lower-end models, so that would be the 6 and the 4-core, would come out over the following months. Now, that basically meant to put a rough timeline into perspective q1 would be the eight core model and then the rumors had it that by q2 slash q3 the lower end products would all be released and everyone would be happy and shiny however that is not the case amd have confirmed and this is from jim Pryor, who is amd's product manager that all ryzen processors will be released he didn't go into details to tell us what they would be, but what he has says is that every AM4 motherboard, cooler, and PC that AMD have announced over the past few days will be available from day one. Now, that doesn't 100% tell us whether it's going to be a paper launch or not. However, the word available does hint that there is going to be at least some stock available in, uh, well, retail channels. Furthermore, it would also hint to us that there are going to be a good deal of options, uh, will be a great deal of options rather, available for customers when you are ch choosing which AM4 platform to jump into bed with. And this is particularly true because Prior has also confirmed that every single Ryzen CPU will be overclockable. Now that's not really surprising, and to be honest with you, we kind of assumed that that would be the case. And it's not really so much of confirmation and yay, it's more confirmation so we're not disappointed. Because um, AMD's previous platforms have all allowed overclockable CPUs, and this would of course mean that AMD are basically just keeping up to that same standard, which in my opinion is really good. It does kind of piss me off about Intel and the like, you know, 6700K or the 4770K or whatever. I don't kind of like that. I do understand why they've done it. And to be honest, the price premium for the K is not that high. And it does also lead us to one other question that primarily focuses on how AMD are going to be handling the various models of the um, overclocking processors. There was, as I said multiple times now, for the 8-core 16-thread, which has been tentatively referred to as SR7, not by AMD, but by rumors, whereas SR5 was the 6-core, uh, and SR3 would be the 4-core, each, of course, handling double the amount of threads, so 4 equals 6, uh, sorry, 8 threads, uh, 6 equals 12 threads, and, of course, 8 equals 16 threads, just so we're all on the same page. With the SR7, there would be a high-end version of that chip, which would have higher clock speeds and whatever out the gate, but it would also overclock to higher levels as well. But there hasn't been any information on whether this is accurate. There has just been a couple of insider rumors. Furthermore, AMD have not hinted anything of the sort. All we do know is that the chip is going to hit about 4 gigahertz turbo. And that's some information I covered, I believe, just yesterday. So you can check out that video if you so desire. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. One of the really nice things about this, however, is that all AMD chips are going to be using the unified AM4 socket. This basically means if you've got a Bristol Ridge APU, several months go by, and then you say, you know what, that's just not enough for me, by golly gosh, I want to jump onto something a bit faster, then by all means you can do that. Um, it's quite interesting, because 
that basically means that you can upgrade your PC however you would like but do remember that only certain parts or sorry only certain brands of the boards allow overclocking this includes the X370, the B350 and the X300 which is a small form factor board so it's quite nice but the only caveat is that only the 370 offers Crossfire or um, NVIDIA SLI support. Now, there are a couple of small notes here. The first is that AMD's Ryzen is not really a CPU in the older traditional sense, like you might say, think of a, a, I don't know, a Pentium 3. Instead, it's very much a advanced version of a system of a chip. What that basically means is most of the actual bits and bobs, like for example the controller which will uh, handle multiple uh, CPU, uh, sorry GPUs, is all bundled on the same sock. But it's down to the motherboard itself to have the bits and bobs, like the traces and whatever else, to actually physically enable that to function. The reason supposedly that this is not been enabled for the lower end boards which in other words would be the b350 which nvidia can, uh, sorry amd consider mainstream is quite simple they believe that it's just like if you're if you're basically buying that board you're probably not going to be doing hardcore overclocking and because you're not spending that amount of money on the motherboard there's a very good chance that you're also not going to then run out and buy a ridiculously expensive a GPU setup. So in short, there's a very good chance you're not going to buy, let's say, two GTX 1080 or 1080 tires or whatever is available. The only slight problem with that um, is that if you are someone who wants to buy, let's say, a cheap, a cheaper board, a B350, obviously we don't know exact pricing yet, and let's say you own an RX 480 now, and in a couple of weeks time, a couple of months time, you decide, gee, you know, the four races have gone down in price, but let's say they go EOL, end of line, you can't just then opt to buy a second card, which is a bit disappointing. Regardless though, it is quite nice, and AMD have hinted that they are not looking to launch the product at the end of Q1, but he did not say anything more. Robert Halleck has confirmed that it's going to be at some point in Q1, but they're not targeting the end. Now, the next rumor comes out from bitsandchips.it, who have been pretty on the ball with rumors, um, and they have cited, quote, private sources. Apparently, EVGA are considering mulling over contemplating, thinking about thinking, of jumping on to the Vega train. Yes, choo-choo. And the reason behind it, as if you believe the rumours, is that NVIDIA's board partners have actually been a bit pissed at them. Now, this primarily comes down to the Founders Edition. What that basically means is that MSRP is, well, higher. And so what you've got this problem is that you remember even when the Founders Edition was announced by NVIDIA? You could tell that people were a bit confused. But then what happened is that um, a bit after that, I can't remember exactly how long, but there was a, uh, a conference hosted by NVIDIA and basically were answering the questions from journalists. And journalists were kind of confused what the Founders Edition was supposed to be for. Essentially, what normally happened from the older generation is that you had a, uh, a basic design. This is like what the GPU manufacturer, AMD, NVIDIA, whatever, would say to their board partners, hey, this is the, this is the cooler we use, this is the recommended, this is um, you know, the, clock, the factory clock speeds, knock yourselves out. And then they would then run off and obviously re release custom versions of the card. However, with the Founders Edition, they said, well, actually, I'm of slightly paraphrasing, but they did say something along the lines of this is the, this is the highest quality components that you can use, it's the best cooler, uh, all of this stuff. And basically, journalists then were like, okay, well, all right, 
why is it so expensive for A? And B, when you're telling us this, aren't you basically saying that your boards are better than your partners and therefore your quality is better than them? And you could see that the chaps who were actually being interviewed by the journalists uh, from NVIDIA noticeably shifted in their position. They were very uncomfortable on stage. And I had a feeling at that point that that probably upset quite a few partners. Now, obviously, MSI, EVGA, and all of those other companies who are using them uh, for their for their various GPUs have still managed to have pretty good sales figures. But I do have the feeling that it probably did rock the boat. So with Vega looking to be pretty impressive, I have a feeling that this might be a great ploy because it's like Nvidia have sold really well with Pascal, really well. So essentially what I'm saying is that a lot of companies didn't really have a choice but to support them because it's where their profit margins lay, especially like EVGA, um, who basically, you know, they put out a few products but one of their biggest products is undoubtedly GPUs. So what this means is that it's not like they're going to be abandoning GeForce. It's not like you're not going to see the new whatever graphics card, the 11 series from NVIDIA sporting an EVGA brand, but it does mean that you're probably not going to see so many instances of EVGA or whomever being exclusive to NVIDIA. And that might mean that NVIDIA are a little less... Uh, enthusiastic about going the Founders Edition route. And to be honest, it's like, the problem with the Founders Edition is it is so much more expensive. Eh, I guess we'll just have to see. And this is even more uh, been compounded, by the way, I forgot to mention about the Titan X Pascal. And so, yeah, it, it's just been a bit weird, to be honest. But as usual, uh, that is a grain of salt until we get confirmation. I wouldn't be surprised, to be frank, if EVGA did jump into bed with AMD because ultimately they're a company and they have to do what's best for them. So that's fine, I have no issue with that. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Normally, I would say, you know, subscribe and do the likey sharey thing. So if you could do that, I would greatly appreciate it. But for now, take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Bye. Well, that was an oops.